Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an old photo effect. And this is actually a collaboration with fellow YouTuber and French photographer Matthew Stern. So if you're not familiar with him, he's actually based out of Paris, France, and on his YouTube channel, he makes a lot of cool experimental lens reviews, takes photos with them, and other Photoshop tutorials. So we thought it'd be a cool idea to take this photo that's taken from an 1880 lens and show you how to create an old photo effect with them. So I'm gonna leave a link to his channel in that video where he takes that 1880 lens and does a little photo experiment with it in the description below. But let's jump into Photoshop and what I have open is actually the raw photo from that 1880 lens and I also have a stock dirty photo paper texture open. You can find these by searching stock photo or texture websites for old paper textures or dirty textures. So I'll leave a link to this one below, but you feel free to find your own. And now let's begin working on our photo. So in order to transform this into an old photo, I've taken inspiration from some actual old photographs that you see. And one thing that you often see is a border around the edge. So what we're gonna do to create a border on this photo or kind of like a frame is go to image, canvas size, and then extend the canvas size one inch outward each way. So 21 and then 12.253. That just adds one inch onto each one. Press okay and you should see it'll create a white border. You might wanna experiment with half an inch or a quarter of an inch depending on how large your photo's size is. This photo is pretty big, so an inch doesn't look that large in comparison. So that's up to your taste. Next, we're gonna actually create a bit of distressing on this border. So I'm gonna go to Layer, New Layer, and here I'm gonna actually grab my paintbrush tool and then go to my default brushes. So click the cogwheel and then Reset Brushes. And at the very bottom, we should find a bunch of different textures. Here's what I'm gonna use with white as my foreground color and a size that's relatively large enough to work on my canvas. And I'm gonna begin roughening up the edges or creating some tears. Try to keep it done by hand so that things don't look too inauthentic. And if you want, you can even switch to some different texture brushes and play around with things like the opacity and the flow to get just the right touch that you want and get the brush reacting in the way that you want. I like to keep it pretty subtle and experiment. If you want, you can go through afterwards with the eraser tool, find another textured brush and maybe erase certain parts if you feel like you went too far or just to create some different type of textures. Or you can go to layer, layer mask and then choose something like reveal all, which will create a layer mask and then allow us to paint in white or black on that layer mask to either hide or show certain parts, but it'll allow us to bring things back if we feel like we messed up too much. So once we have the roughening up of the edges, the next thing we're gonna do is apply that dirty paper texture. So I had the paper texture open in its own document. I just dragged it into Photoshop. And now I'm gonna take this document, I'll drag the window off so I can see both, and then I'll click the papers layer and then I'll drag it onto the photo. Now it's on this document. So my photo was very big, this photo that Matthew actually provided. It was very large, it's a raw file. And in this case, the texture is a little bit smaller. So what we can do is just Command T to free transform it, and then hold Shift, and then just make it big enough so that it covers the canvas. Normally that'll lose a bit of quality, but it doesn't really matter in this case, because we're using it to distress the quality, and it's not gonna make too big of a difference. So once I have it scaled to cover the entire canvas, then I'm gonna set the blending mode of this layer to multiply. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna roughen up the edges. So now that white turns into that dirty paper texture. And then I'm gonna grab my move tool and move things around just so there's not any largely blotchy areas on the skin. So one thing I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna go set this back to normal and then I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool and then using a soft round brush, I'll clone some areas. So I'll hold Alt or Option. I'll grab some areas over here and then I'll cover that kind of dark blotchy scar because I don't want that showing up on her forehead and messing things up too much. 
So now I have got that area covered pretty smoothly. I can set it back on multiply and it looks a lot better. We haven't distorted the original photo in a weird way. Next, we're gonna add an overall sepia old photo color. So what I'm gonna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. Now here is where we can map the colors of this original photo to different colors. What we want is to open up the menu and then open up the cog wheel and go to the photographic toning presets. Here you'll find a bunch of preset gradients and a lot of these are actually nice sepia tones that you could use if you prefer. One that I like to use for this effect is gold one. This is what it looks like you should find it right after some of these more silvery ones. If you leave your mouse on any of these long enough, it'll actually show you the name of them. But what I'm gonna do is actually double click and edit this gradient because it's a bit too brown. What I'm gonna do is just click that second to last brown color stop and then just press delete. And then it'll give me the gradient that I actually want, which is that nice brown old photo color. Next, it's got a bit too much contrast in my opinion for what's supposed to be an old weathered photo. So I'm gonna to go to layer new adjustment layer levels. Here, I'm gonna take the black output level and I'm just gonna increase it to a level that I'm happy with, which is just gonna add some fading to the black and some overall less contrasted look. If you like, you could play around with the actual levels in the middle to adjust the contrast of your photo. And one thing that you can do is double up on the texture. So this is how it looks with just one photo layer texture, but if I command J or right click and duplicate this texture layer or had added another one and then maybe move it around in position, I can get twice as much texture and uh, that will darken things up a bit depending on your original photo, but you can lower the opacity and play around with different amounts of texture and positioning to get even more of an old photo look. You can also play around with layer positioning so right now everything is under the gradient map, which is gonna give it one unified color. But if I take this layer and I move it above everything and it's still brown, it'll create a little bit of variation in color. But as you can see, all these steps are adjustable and you can add your own spin to it and use just the right exact type of color that you want. But I think we've done a great job taking this 1880 lens and making it look more like an 1880 photo. So if you guys wanna check out the original video, where Matthew created this lens and check out some more cool lens experiments on his channel, definitely click here to check those out. Subscribe to his channel. He's got a lot of cool stuff and it was fun working with these really old lens pictures that you would never know are old. If you guys are new to my channel, then definitely subscribe and stay tuned for future photo and video editing tutorials as well from me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.